Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video will be episode 6 in our intro to Pi Game series uh, with Python. And um, if you haven't seen the videos leading up to this video, we will be starting with the code we've created so far. So if you'd like to follow along, then I recommend going back and checking those out. Uh, otherwise, if you're just here for the concepts covered in this video, then um, you know, feel free to ask any questions in the comments, but uh, understand that there is a lot of code already existing today. So a quick recap of what we've already built. We have a bouncing ball that uh, you try to avoid as the player in the orange rectangle. And we have game over conditions where the player and the ball stop moving when they collide. But what we haven't done yet is handled restart conditions or any kind of like high score um, tracking or keeping track of the history. So we're gonna take a look at doing some of that today. Uh, and without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a bit to actually track whether or not game over has occurred. And so we're going to create a boolean variable uh, game over and obviously to initialize it up at the beginning of the game we're going to say it's false. And then once we have collision which is when game over runs we're going to go ahead and say this is when game over becomes true. And this is actually going to become pretty relevant because we're going to add um, some controls that can restart the game, but only if game over is true. Uh, so this does mean we're going to <clears throat> want to pass in the global game over variable. So that way this is referring to the uh, overarching one. And then we're going to add some instruction that's only up when game over is being called that tells them to uh, how to restart the game. And so um, I'm going to make this smaller. It doesn't need to be the same huge size as um, doesn't need to be the hu same huge size as game over. And I'm going to call this display restart. Um, and what we're going to do with this is we're going to tell them. Hey, press, let's say space to restart. And we'll go ahead and make this white. And we're going to throw this down. <coughs> um, we're going to go ahead and throw this down at like 170 because we're going to be much smaller font. Um, but then a little further back because it's longer text. Okay. So, or a little further down, sorry. And then uh, press space to restart, display restart. So um, what we're going to do, though, since that text is only coming up um, when game over is true, we need to actually create the logic so that when you press space um, in, in this, when you release space, actually, that's when uh, game over conditions reset, but only if game over is true. So we're going to go ahead and put that code in now, and we're going to say, if event dot key equals pi game dot space and I'm putting this in k space um, I'm putting this in the key up condition because to me it makes a little more sense that the game would restart once you've released the space bar not necessarily when you've pushed it down um, it would be valid to do it the other way if you want this is how I'm choosing to do it and the other thing we want to do is actually say and game over so we actually want to check that the game over variable is also true and then da, 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 da. so in here we need to put all of the code in place to reset the game so does that mean we're going to move circle X and circle Y back to their initial positions and we started that guy at the middle of the screen so 300 300 um, if you remember in game over what we did is we stopped the direction variables for everybody so you weren't able to move we need to go ahead and reinitialize those back to what we gave them which was four and five and then we're gonna put our player back where he was as well so 300 it could be a girl it's just a rectangle but so player X 300 player Y 500 and then um, let's go ahead and reset the score back to zero and let's make the game over variable false again so this really should act as a full restart let's go ahead and see 
how we look if we've got that done. So let's try to get hit here. Oh, what have I done? Boolean is not calling. 153, check collision. Well, that should all be okay. 46, game over. Oh, okay, we're gonna have to name our game over variable something else. We've already used game over with a space, underscore. Um, we'll get rid of the underscore. That should solve our problems. So tried to create a, tried to create a variable, oops. That one just needs to stay. Try to create a variable with the same name as a function. That's gonna give you all kinds of issues. So that should take care of that. Let's go ahead and run that again. Take a look here. Let's go get hit. Okay, now I'm gonna try pressing space to restart. We see we've got score four, the position's out of whack. And well, I'm pressing space and I'm not getting anything. So let's get into the troubleshooting. So game over starts out false. Check for collision, collision, game over. Ah, forgot one underscore. <laughs> there we go. That can be frustrating. All right, here we go. All right, trying to space, there we go. So the player resets, uh, it doesn't put you in an impossible position to get out of. The ball resets, your score resets. So that's pretty cool. Um, one more thing I'd like to add in this video is let's actually keep track of the previous score and your high score for this playthrough because as of now you press space and it's really like restarting. There's no way of knowing if you did better, if you did worse, if, if you're getting any better. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and do a little bit of this tracking. This is actually pretty easy. Um, we're just gonna go down to um, the game over stuff and we will go ahead and say, do, 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 do. actually let's go up into our variables and define a couple new ones. So we're gonna, right where we put score, here we go. Let's add two new variables that we're gonna use for this and we'll say previous score and set equals zero and let's make a high score and set equals zero, okay? And that's just so after um, the game resets, we're going to do a few things. So uh, no matter what in game over, we're going to go ahead and before we change the score to zero, we're gonna say previous score equals score. And then what we'll say in here is if score is greater than high score, then let's make our high score equal to score and then we clear out the score. So what we just did is we made the, the last run um, equal to whatever when we reset, whatever we just scored and then um, if our score is greater than the highest score we've had, then it'll overwrite it, but only if it's a new high. So now we just have to copy our display score um, code and make a few new ones for display, let's say previous score, and display high score, we'll, we'll call it. And uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna update that in both places. And let's move them down the screen by 20 pixels. So they should be pretty tightly packed in the top left corner. Um, display high score. And now let's change the text to say high score and make that a string of our variable high score. And then this string will say last score. Previous is kind of a long word and we will say previous score for the variable. And I did that kind of quickly. I don't want this to chew up uh, too much time, but let's see now if we have a previous score and a high score tracker. Okay, so we're counting two, three, four. All right, now when I press space, both last score and high score should update to five and score should go to zero. All right. So let's try getting something that's not a high score. We got three, so last score should update to three, but the five should maintain, and it does. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's how you handle restart conditions, um, you know, clearing out all of your variables and resetting them to starting positions, as well as keeping track of a last score and a high score and things like that. Um, so still to come, 
we'll be doing some uh, difficulty increases because for now you're just gonna have kind of a slow moving ball forever and obviously this is kind of a boring game it's not too challenging um, you could probably pretty easily rack up a high score but you'd be real bored with it real fast so in the future videos we'll work on increasing difficulty um, as well as potentially taking a look at like some player boosts and speed upgrades things like that uh, so for now hope you enjoyed this video uh, found it useful and kind of fun and if you have any questions or things you'd like to see in the future feel free to let me know in the comments below and if you found this or any of the content on the channel useful, I really appreciate a uh, like and a subscribe. Helps the channel out a lot. And as always, thanks for watching and good luck with your code. Thanks. Bye.